And that's what we're doing. The state of this ummah, the problem with this ummah, you know who the problem is? <laughs> it's you and I. You and I. We make this ummah. And the way that you and I are living our lives is having an effect on this ummah. Everywhere I go, I'm faced with Muslims who are the best people I know. I know every person in this room is a beautiful soul who has a great heart. And I'm not sugarcoating this. Wallahi, I believe in the depths of my heart that every person in this room is a beautiful person with a big heart and means well. I don't doubt that. That's why I flew all the way over here. But that's not enough. You are a part of the Ummah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. My brothers and my sisters, every one of you is valuable. Every one of you is important. <coughs> Don't get caught up in the fact that we're large in number. It's not quantity that Allah is looking for. It's quality. It's quality. My brother and my sister, what you do and how you live your life, it's important. What are you doing with your life? Again, you know, I'm being honest with you, really. You know, I'm not, I'm not here to give you Disney stories and, you know, you know twinkle, twinkle, little star. And let's just all take photos outside and call it a day. And everyone goes home and jumps on Facebook. A oh, fantastic event. I had the best time of my life. I'm not here for that. I'm here for change. And I hope you're here for that too. What are you doing with your life? Where are you not? How much more time will you waste? Let me cut straight to the chase. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, very, very clear. We did not create jinn and the human being except for one reason and one reason only. You know, so many of us, we struggle so much with this. So what are you trying to say to me, brother? What are you telling me this, that, and the other way? This isn't important. Yeah, it's not about what you and I think. You and I are slaves of Allah. And when you're a slave, you don't have an opinion. You see, the day that you said, La ilaha illallah, and let me assure you, everyone in this room, being a Muslim is a choice that you make. None of you are forced to be Muslims. None of you. You choose to be a Muslim. You see, I chose Islam, even though I was born Muslim. I was born Muslim and raised as a Muslim. But what Islam, it was nonsense, it was rubbish. And things didn't change until I woke up and I decided, hey, I need to bust the move, man. This is my thing. I want to change for me. My life is passing me by. Most of us don't even know why we're here. We're living a life, and wallahi, with all respect to everyone, we live a life that's closer to the lives of animals than a human being. We wake up in the morning, same thing every day. It's Groundhog Day every day. That is this why I'm alive, to do what everyone else does. And the only time you're special and the only time you shine is when your handbag and your shoes are a little bit different to the next one. Is this it? Is this my life? Allah says we did not create you except to worship, except for Ibadah, my brothers and my sisters. That's why Allah created you. You know, it's amazing. Allah makes things easy and we insist on making it difficult. Allah says, my slave, I created you to worship me. I don't care, my slave. I don't care what car you drive. I don't care what brand you wear. I don't care how big your house is. My slave, I don't care. These things don't face me. My slave, all that I worry about is you and your relationship with me. And we say, no, Allah, no. Everything else is more important to me than my and your relationship. You know, it's amazing. Allah says, I created you for my ibadah. Worship me, my slave, and I will take care of all of your affairs. My slave, establish your five prayers and I will look after your risk and your sustenance. And you say, Allah, 
Allah. The hell with your relationship. The hell with your deed. I want to work. I want to dress. I want to go. I want to buy. It's about me. And then when things don't go your way, oh, what are you doing this to me for, man? Amazing. Amazing. Wallahi, it's amazing. You're looking for love in all the wrong places. You're looking for happiness in all the wrong places. It's with Allah. You know, it's because of my deen I can't expose my past, you know. I really wish I could, but I can't. I'm restricted by my deen. But I've been there, man. I've been there. I've tried them. I've tasted them. I was there. Any drug, any woman, any club, any car, I was there, I was seeing it, man. When I was 20, I was driving cars. You look at the magazines. And I was empty, wallahi, I was empty. Going and coming and watches and cars and girls and women. But then what? Then what? What happens after that? There's an emptiness inside me, I'm lonely. I spent my life trying to please him and trying to please her and trying to fit in here and trying to fit in there. When they're all alone, Allah is calling me and I'm turning my back on him. My brothers and my sisters, you are valuable, man. And Allah loves you more than the world tells you. Allah loves you. You have no idea how much Allah loves you. And Allah says to you, I don't care. I don't care about this, that and the other. I mean, imagine, imagine, Wallahi, imagine. You know, people try to tell me that us Muslims, we oppress our women. Look at the way you treat them, and look how the women have to cover up, and look at, wow, 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 amazing. Allah, we oppress our women. Your women are working 24 hours of the day. Fashion is changing every single day. Today it's red, tomorrow it's black. The, the day after it's short, the day after that it's long. Now the hair is up, then the hair is down, then it's this, then it's that. And no matter what she does, she never fits in. It's never enough. They try to tell me that we oppress our women. Living in a world, the more she is like a man, then the more honorable and the more accepted that she is. Allah says, my slave, I don't care. The more you are the way I created you, that's the way I love you the most. Allah says, don't even pluck your eyebrows because I created your eyebrows and I love you. The way I fashioned you is exactly how I wanted it. Today the eyebrows are going up, down, they're thick, they're thin. Now they're completely off and it's drawn on with a pen. I know you're laughing, but because they're trying to find the right shape and she hasn't found it yet. And Allah's watching you. My slave, you think you can do a better job than the one I did? Allah says, I created you for worship. I created you to worship me, my slave. And you know, people feed me this, you know, this look, Alhamdulillah, I don't pray, you know. I don't pray, but Alhamdulillah, what's in my heart? I'm a good person, man. I'm nice, I'm polite, I'm good to my friend. I think, yeah, all right, that's nice. But that's not what Allah created you for. I mean, it's good that you do good things. That's a good thing, that's nice, but that's not what Allah created you for. Yeah, maybe I'm not the best Muslim, but brother, let me tell you how many millions of pounds is in my bank account. Let me tell you what I've established. Let me show you the car that I drive. I think, Ya Khil Karim, my beautiful brother and my sister, this, this, it's not why you're here. My brothers and sisters, we are different. Muslims know their life in this world is very short. You're going, you're leaving, you're not staying behind. Today you're young and you're beautiful. Tomorrow you're old and no one looks at you anymore. The day after that you're gone, you're nothing but a memory. This claim of our brother, but you know, I'm a good guy. It doesn't cut the mustard seed. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example. 
Let's say one of you has a factory and you advertise in this factory that you need a worker. You've advertised that you need a worker. You need someone in the, you know, whatever, in the warehouse. So someone comes into you, he comes into the factory and you say to this person, whatever it is, young man, young woman, you tell them, look, let me be very clear with you. The factory is working and operating very well. My business is in tip-top condition. Don't worry about the office. Don't worry about the landscaping. Don't worry about the building. Don't worry about internal affairs. Don't worry about nothing. My business is operating like clockwork. The only reason why I'm hiring you is I need you to move the boxes from section A to section B. <coughs> I mean, is the job description clear? Is there any confusion in why you're being hired? Answer me, is there any confusion? I'm making it clear, don't get caught up in anything. Young brother, young sister, don't get caught up in anything. Alhamdulillah, this is my business, I'm running it very well. All that I need from you, please, just move the boxes from section A for me, and please, can you just put them in section B? That's all I want from you, and I'll pay you your wage at the end of the week. Wallahi, I will. So you walk in, boss isn't there, you can see the boxes in section A, you see that section B is empty. And you say, so you know what, before I start, let me go upstairs to the kitchen and I'll make myself a cup of tea. So you go upstairs, you make yourself a cup of tea, then you look at the condition of the kitchen and you say, man, this is disgusting. How do these people even live like this? So you say, you know what, I'm going to win some brownie points. I'm going to clean up the kitchen, man. So you start cleaning up the kitchen and you do a fantastic job at it. Then you look at the carpet and you say, this place is filthy. You pull out the Dyson and you start vacuuming. Then you make your way downstairs, you see that the trucks and the vans, they're all over the place, the lorries are everywhere, so you start organizing things, then you start cleaning the driveway, then you start mowing the lawn, then you start doing the landscape. You did the most phenomenal work, the most amazing things you did in that place. You went all over the joint except move the boxes from section A to section B. You did everything I asked you not to do. Then you come to me at the end of the week and you have the audacity to ask me for a wage. Would you pay it? Would you pay it? <coughs> Why not? You're thinking, look, thanks for the lawn, thanks for the carpet, and thanks for the kitchen. But I didn't ask for that. You did everything except what I told you to do. Every one of us is living this amazing life. I'm sure you're living an amazing life and you've got amazing dreams. But you're doing anything and everything except that which Allah asked for. Then you have the audacity to sit down and think and believe that you're going to paradise. Based on what? Based on what, my brothers and my sisters? We've become lost, we've become confused. We no longer know how to put things in priority. You know, I've got beautiful young brothers and sisters, beautiful souls. I know that they're beautiful. You know, this is me personally. I don't know how you guys feel. But for me, I genuinely believe, Wallahi, even the murderer, even a murderer, if he's a genuine Muslim, I believe deep down in the depths of his heart, there is a beautiful soul waiting to come out. That's just me. I don't believe that anyone is completely wicked. Yes, we're partially wicked. You know, there's uh, problems in the person's life. Yes. But if you're going to try and convince me that any person, well, not even a non-Muslim, that is completely wicked, I don't believe it. There's always some khair in there. There's always some khair. But we've become lost. We no longer know, we no longer know how to value things. I'll give you an example. How many of us, how many of us, we've been given everything by Allah. We live in beautiful homes. Maybe you don't think it's a beautiful home, but go outside and see what's happening around the world. Maybe then you'll appreciate the home that you live in. You've been given everything. We're still ungrateful. We're still unappreciative. You know what I find amazing? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asks, Oh my slave, 
Establish your prayer. I want you to pray five times a day for me. How many of us don't pray? And I'm sure you have a beautiful reason. How many of us don't pray? Amazing numbers. Amazing numbers of people who don't pray. And look, by no means, it's not my job to judge anyone. Again, don't, don't, don't think I'm here to push and, and, and you know, sit here and judge anyone. I'm the filthiest person in this room. And wallahu alaikum, I'm not being humble in any way, shape or form. I know my sins and I know my past. <coughs> but I look at Muslims. At them, do you pray? Nah, man. Look, yeah, look, I know I'm supposed to be praying, but I'm busy, man. Really? My sister and my brother, you're so busy. You don't have 20 minutes in your day to pray your five prayers. Do you know how bad and severe it is to miss one salah? Does anyone here know? How bad it is. You know, today you and I think that look, alhamdulillah, he's a beautiful guy. He just doesn't pray. You know, religiously, he's the filthiest of people. But today we don't think through the logic of deen. We think through the logic of people. No, 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 alhamdulillah, she's the best person in the world. Lovely soul, very polite, very caring. Everything about her is 100%. It just happens to be, she just has a little problem, she doesn't pray. You know, with Allah, the one that doesn't pray. You know what, let me cut straight to the chase. Let me ask you something. Do you think murder is a bad thing? It's not a trick question. Murder, is it a bad thing? <laughs> Let's bump it up. What about rape? You think rape is an evil thing? What about being a pedophile? You think that's awful? I think that's the most disgusting thing in the world. All major sins. All major sins. What about drinking alcohol? Filthy, yeah? What about drugs? Filthy, yeah? Wallahi, my brothers and my sisters, please listen attentively. You could be the biggest murderer in the world. You could be the filthiest rapist in the world. You could be someone who the bottle of alcohol never leaves his hand. You could commit the filthiest of sins. You could do the most extreme and the most bizarre of things. And by no means am I promoting you to do any of them. But you could be a, the absolute filthiest of things. You could do all of this. All of these sins. All of these sins put together are easier. They are lighter in the eyes of Allah than for any one of you to miss one salah. Did you know that? For you to miss one salah is worse in the eyes of Allah than any one of you can meet all those sins put together. Some brothers are looking at me, man, what the crack are you on about, bro? Because our understanding's been lost. Your understanding's been lost. This is the haq of Allah. Brothers are telling me, yeah, look, I'm a great guy. I just don't pray, brother. What are you talking about? Do you know what it means to not pray? Do you know what that means? I see young guys getting married. Sisters, how could you possibly accept a man that doesn't pray? Don't come to me years later crying, telling me he's cheating on you. If this man has the audacity to turn his back on Allah, then what hope do you have? <coughs> or did you get caught up with the BMW that came into the driveway? Seriously, my brothers and my sisters, I'm speaking to you seriously. Do not pray. And I ask you why, sincerely, please tell me, why is it that you don't pray? Please, just tell me something. Did Allah ever, did Allah ever once let you down? Has Allah ever failed you? He created you from nothing. You were nothing, you were a piece. There was a time you weren't even a piece of sperm. Then from a piece of sperm, He allowed you to enter the womb of your mother. 
in three layers of darkness. He designed you, he fashioned you, he sustained you for nine months in the womb of your mother. Who taught you to swim in the womb of your mother? Where was your money then? Where was your business then? Where was your car then? Where was your girlfriend, my young brother? Where was your girlfriend then? My young sister, the guy that swept your heart on Facebook, where was he then when you were swimming in the womb of your mother? Who was feeding you then? For nine months, he never failed you once, never. Then after nine months, Allah allowed the impossible to be possible. He allowed something like this to come out of a womb that's like this. Angels came down, wings were spread, your mother almost seen death, and you came into this world and Allah allowed it to be. With what help? With what aid? My brother, my sister, what is it that's distracting you from Allah? Where was this distraction? Where was it back then? And you came, you were little, you were helpless, you were naked. Allah allowed the blanket to cover you. He gave you a mother that breastfed you. Breast milk with all their technology and all their money and all their science and all their know-how. They still, they still all together, they still cannot produce a formula that is even half as good as the milk that Allah put in the breast of your mother. In summer, he made a cool. In winter, he made a war. Where were you then? You had hands, but you couldn't grab. You had legs, but you couldn't walk. And he was there for you every day. He was there for you every night. He never failed you. He allowed you to walk. He allowed you to talk. He allowed you to grab things. He allowed you to learn. You knew nothing. He allowed you to learn. He started calculating. He started to differentiate between right and wrong and this and that. <coughs> and now, now my brother and my sister, because you can walk on your own and you can put a sandwich together and you can feed yourself all on your own. Now you don't need Allah. Now you're too busy for Allah. I don't have time to pray. What do you have time for my brother and my sister? Amazing. How can you? Ya Allah, you gave me so much. What's he, what's he asking for? Five prayers? Is this so hard? Is this so difficult for you? I'm not asking you to become a chef. I'm not asking you to wear a turban. I'm not asking you to do... No, no, I'm, I'm just asking you to pray. You know, imagine, imagine one of you. You know, seriously, seriously, imagine one of you. You have a child. And this child comes into this world. And he has nothing. And you work so hard. And you protect this child. And you clothe this child. And you feed this child. And you're there for this child all his life. And you watch him grow. And you watch him become a young man and a young woman. And then one day, just once, you come to your child and you say, Oh, my child, please, do you think you can help me out? Your child turns around and says, Get away from me, man. I'm too busy, bro. How would you feel? How would you feel? How does Allah feel when the time for Salah enters? And yes, I know you're not saying it on your tongue. You're saying it through actions. Ya Allah, I'm busy. I'm busy, Allah. My brothers and my sisters, so much time we are wasting. Wallahi, wallahi, you know, I'm running out of time and I think the aircon turned off. Please, please, I'm begging you. Honestly, I'm begging you. Don't waste your life. You know, I don't benefit from this. Like I said, I didn't get paid to be here. I'm not asking you for fame. I'm not asking you to tip. I'm not asking for anything, please, for you, for your sake. I want you to change. I'm telling you, I've been around the world. I've tried. The only happiness you will ever have, it's with Allah. It's not a joke. The ulama of the past 
master used to say, by Allah, if the kings of the world, if they knew what we possessed in our hearts when it comes to the relationship with Allah, they would fight us with their swords. Look, how many celebrities are committing suicide? Why? They have everything you and I are running for. We want fame, we want status, we want cars, we want women. They have it. Yet they're killing themselves. Why? There's an emptiness, man. There's something missing in my heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, Allah bi dhikrillah. Verily in the remembrance of Allah. What does the heart find? Allah says the heart finds rest. Allah didn't say happiness. You know why? Because if Allah said happiness, I'll be the first to stand up and say, you know, if Allah said happiness, I would argue that. Because people try to tell me that money doesn't bring happiness. Psh, give me a million pounds, I'll put a smile on your face like you've never seen before. Let's be real, man. People tell me girls don't bring happiness. Come on, man. I don't know where you're going now, bro, but you should come to Sydney. I'll take you to the right places. People try to tell me that drugs don't bring happiness. I don't know what you're smoking, but it's obviously not good enough. Yeah, they bring happiness. But that don't bring peace to your heart. Look, you're sitting here now. Listening about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what, half an hour? You didn't take a drug. You didn't pay a single dollar. You didn't have to stand in front of a single camera. But I am sure with no doubt in my mind that there's a feeling in your heart right now. You feel like, wallahi, if I died right now, I'll be the happiest person in the world. Half an hour. Half an hour. Imagine you spent a day like this. Imagine you spent a week like this. Iman. This is Deen. This is Deen. We've become lost. We've become confused. And I understand. We're trying to fit in in a rough world. I understand. Well, my, I understand. You know, people attack all the time. Look at these sisters, man. They're wearing this hijab that's half hijab and half fringe. Now, yeah, I know it's wrong, but hey, at least she's halfway there. And you know what? I can see it. It's in her heart. She obviously wants to do it, but she wants to fit in. We're living in a tough world. We have an identity crisis. But my sister, I'm telling you, you will only find happiness with Allah. Please Allah, and Allah will make everything else around you happy. But you try to please the people around you, my sister, trust me. Trust me. You're wasting your time. 